Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. For those who's new, my name is Christian and I love plants. And in today's video, we are going to talk all about snake plants, share with you guys how I care for them, how not to kill them. Believe it or not, you can kill a snake plant. And also we're gonna do a bit of propagation through separation and division. I'm gonna separate this uh, baby whale fin that no longer is a baby from its original mother plant. And then we're gonna try and save this Zeylanica. There's some new growth that's happening here, but the original mother plant is somewhat dying right now. So I wanna do that today. So there's many reasons why I think Sansevierias are awesome house plants. And I think everyone should have one of them, at least one. Uh, first, they help purify the air by removing a lot of that toxins and help you sleep better. You know, the second thing is I think from a style and the aesthetic look, uh, they're great to kind of help create dividers or separate a room, especially when you have a whole bunch of these guys grouped together. Or as a standalone plant, I think they make a pretty cool statement piece, especially if you got like a whale fin, you know, a single leaf. And this is kind of one of the reasons why I want to separate this guy because I prefer it as a single leaf in a pot. They also come in so many varieties to not only match your home or style, but also match your personality, like the starfish. I'm just kidding, but uh, you know, obviously I got my Zelanica here, and my whale fin, a samurai as well, a cylindrical. But more importantly, what makes a snake plant or Sansevieria awesome house plants is they are so easy to care for. They can thrive in any lighting condition or direction, whether you have a north, east, south, or west facing windows. They require very little watering. They don't need to be repotted often or fertilized. And that's why I think these plants are great for beginners. Uh, you know, with that said, you can kill a snake plant. Confession, I have killed one before. I'm sure some of you guys have as well. You know, if you have, comment and let me know. But I have only killed one in my lifetime. So there's a few ways you can kill your snake plant. I think the number one cause would be overwatering. You know, these guys require very little water because of their rhizome where it stores a lot of their water. And uh, by overwatering them, just like most plants, you know, it, you will kill them. Uh, the second way you can kill your plant, uh, which is what I did with one of my snake plants, is in low, near freezing temperatures. So I had one of my other snake plants um, outside during like this, just beginning of the summer months last year. And overnight, you know, here in Toronto, Canada, sometimes the weather can drastically change. It hit below 10 degrees Celsius, which is I think about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And it was doing that for the next couple of days, you know, thinking that, you know, it's going to warm up. Eventually, the leaves started to really droop and uh, the, the plant just died from a, a cold temperature. So that's another way to kill your snake plant. And the other way to also kill your plant, which is what's happening with this mother plant of my Zeylanica that you guys see here, is by underwatering. So even though these guys... Oh no, my Pokemon just fell. Okay, I don't know where Charizard went, but I still have Bulbasaur, so that's good. Um, yeah, as I was saying, even though snake plants, you know, thrive off neglect, don't like to be overwatered, and requires very little watering. Like, I water my snake plants in the, in the summer months about once a month, and obviously you want to let the soil go completely dry before watering them. But with this one, I wasn't watering it at all. I think I went like three months not watering this guy. And as a result, you guys can see here, the leaves will start to dry out, you know, for the most part, as I mentioned, uh, the rhizome and the roots, that's where they like to store a lot of the water. But, and this I think happens with most plants is when you don't water them, they're gonna start obviously drying out with the leaves or start becoming droopy. And eventually it's gonna hit that root ball and that root system and your plant's gonna be dead. But thankfully, you know, I finally decided, okay, let's start watering this guy. So we started to obviously give it the right condition and it started to shoot out new growth, which is this piece right here. So that's the area that we're gonna separate from uh, the original mother plant. But yeah, so that's what we're about to do right now. We'll start with the Zeylanica, and then we'll see if the root system and the rhizome of the mother plant is still healthy. Maybe we can just remove the dead leaves and then uh, replant the rhizome still, and it'll probably shoot off some new growth. We'll obviously separate this new growth because I think it looks so cool. And I never realized that the pattern on this guy is, is pretty dope, you know? Uh, there was a reason why I bought this plant uh, last year uh, because of obviously sheer size and just a pattern on its leaves. And then we'll move on to uh, separating this whale fin from its mother plant. So I'm gonna get set up and then we'll be back shortly. All right guys, so we'll start with this one. We'll remove it from its container, remove the old soil, and then we'll take a look to see how the, uh, you know, new growth is attached to the mother plant and where we can start separating and propagating these guys. i 
right guys, so that took a little bit longer than uh, I had expected. Uh, partly because you guys can see right here, there's a lot of those rhizomes. So I was starting to uh, really outgrow the pot, so it was a bit stuck. And these rhizomes are pretty cool. They look like carrots. I've never seen this kind. I do recall the whale fin is a little bit more clear and white. And this is, a, it literally looks like a carrot, you know, with that orange color that you guys see right there. So I'm going to remove a bit of more of the soil and then we'll grab a clean knife and we'll start cutting the rhizome to try and separate the new growth. You guys can see these are new growth right here, as well as this one right here. So, and then we got this one right here. Uh, you guys can see that it's new growth because of, it's just, you know, clean and this like light color at the base. And then the center here is the mother plant. And um, so we're gonna start removing a few of the dead leaves. I think we can still save the mother plant. It looks pretty healthy still, just based on center leaves look to be okay. And I'm sure that the rhizome is gonna be uh, just fine, but we'll remove a lot of these uh, dead leaves that uh, he's got going on. And they're pretty easy to kind of just remove now. See, this one just came off. So you guys can see there. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna get cleaned up. I'm gonna remove the soil and then we'll start uh, propagating and separating. guys so we remove as much of the soil as possible and you guys can see here literally these rhizos look like carrots to me so I think what we're gonna do is start separating them by using a sharp clean knife and how you want to go about when you're cutting rhizomes and separating you know this uh, a baby or new growth from its mother plant is you want to make sure that when you're cutting the rhizome that there's already roots uh, attached to the rhizome you don't want it to be kind of bare uh, it's gonna take a while for it to to grow roots again so uh, let's go ahead and try and start separating these guys I think we're gonna start with this this one right here uh, if you guys can see that right now so we'll take a sharp knife and uh, we'll cut and you guys can see that there's roots right there attached to it so we're gonna probably cut maybe right here yeah, so we'll do that right now. So again, just wanna, I wanna, okay. So there's one that we cut right now. So this is a new growth. You guys can see there's already roots attached and a bit of the rhizome there. So we'll find another new growth and we'll do that uh, throughout this entire plant right now. So, look really really nice and beautiful I actually might do a stand alone uh, with this one uh, separately because I just like the way this these two leaves look together so uh, we'll probably cut right there in the middle and uh, see what we're dealing with here sucks so this new leaf um, that was attached to these two it was at the end uh, it just came off so what we're gonna do with this one is we're gonna try and propagate this guy unfortunately it's obviously detached now from the rhizome and therefore no roots so what we're gonna do is the uh, water propagation method which takes forever I've, I've been trying it with uh, this one already and you know you obviously want to cut it and we'll do that shortly after and then you put in water, but it takes forever. I prefer this type of propagation method, which is just separation, you know, allowing kind of the mother plant to produce pups and then separating it and then uh, creating a new plant with it. But that's okay, this is not wasted. We can definitely use this guy still. Uh, it's just unfortunate because I really, really like both of them together. Uh, but you know what? That's okay, we got one, we got two, we got these is three. Ah, all right and we got this single one here four so these guys right now we're gonna plant together and again try and make a, a nice fall snake plant again and then the mother plant right here that you guys see um, has all these crazy rhizomes we're gonna just remove the dead leaves and then we're gonna you know what we might just start a whole new plant with this one as well and uh, yeah so there's you know the centerpiece still looks okay it's not the healthiest looking leaves uh, you know it's got a bit of burning right now but that's okay we, we can definitely still uh, save this guy you know you don't want to throw away a healthy plant especially when it's still got a healthy root system rhizomes all right guys so we're going to uh, use our cacti soil with obviously a lot of perlite you know i still like to add that 
extra perlite just for drainage. Even though the cacti soil would already be enough for this type of uh, a plant, but uh, I still want to be safe because uh, I do tend to overwater. But in this case, I was underwatering this guy. Now, I often get the question, you know, shouldn't you wait till the rhizomes, you know, callus a bit before planting them back into soil? You could do that. You could do it about maybe 24 hours just to allow this guy to dry out. And reason being is because you don't want to take a chance of uh, rotting. But I've actually just repotted it back into soil right away. And what I don't do is I don't water this plant for a good, you know, three or four days. And then from there, I'll just continue to water it uh, like I normally would with a snake plant. That just allows kind of this to dry out a bit while still being in the soil. So, you know, it's, you know, you can try it either way. But for me, uh, I've been okay with just planting them directly into soil after cutting them from the uh, mother plant. So that's what we're going to do right now. Uh, we're going to just use our cacti soil here with a bit of perlite and we're going to put these guys together. So. And now I'm thinking, come what may, don't care about what others say when I'm with you now. Through the autumn and the winter snow, keep telling all the friends we know. Ta-da! Alright guys, so we replanted this uh, new growth of the uh, Zeylanica and I think what I want to do is I want to put some rocks on the base of this because it is a bit top heavy and because I'm not going to water this right away uh, I'm probably just uh, want to make sure that you know it holds itself up for a bit until that roots and the soil kind of you know merge together and starts uh, uh, growing well again so <laughs> excited now that I feel like I got a brand new plant again because that Previously, Lanica was not looking good. <laughs> so, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and see what we can do with the mother plant, and then we'll cut up this um, leaf that kind of just got detached, and we'll try and propagate this guy through water propagation, and then we'll do the uh, whale fin. I'm with you. Alright guys, so what you want to do with this leaf, if you want to do like a water type of propagation, is you just want to take sharp scissors and just start cutting them in pieces and then putting one end of it into a glass of water and uh, just put in bright light and uh, yeah, hopefully they'll root. Uh, I know I'm doing this right now and honestly I started maybe a leaf, I started cutting one uh, about a month ago and it still has no roots so uh, but you know what we obviously want to put this to good use we don't want to throw it away so let's go ahead and do that right now so I think I'm gonna start cutting it probably here at the base and we'll definitely use the base right here I want to see if this thing can root okay so I'll put this guy in water looks like celery <laughs> okay I'll do a couple more Alrighty, so what I'm gonna do is put these guys like that, and this one like that. I think that's one, and then we'll get another big glass for these guys right here. Alright, guys, so we separated the mother plant from its uh, new growth, which is no longer babies, but they're right here, so I got two of them. I'm gonna actually have this guy outside the mother plant anyway, and I'm gonna make sure that, you know, I don't leave it overnight if the temperature does drop below 10 degrees. And then this one we're gonna keep in our bathroom or maybe in the closet, not in the closet, but in my uh, little den right there, because I do wanna start adding more plants there. And again, this guy can thrive in a, a much more lower lighting condition, and I don't get much natural light there, so I think he'll be fine. And then obviously we're gonna try and place this guy in bright light. And I'm hopeful that they will start showing some roots, you know, hopefully by this uh, growing season. And then now we're gonna move on to our whale fin. All right guys, so we're now gonna move into our whale fin. And when I first got this about over two years ago, it was this uh, big one right here with a baby that was already attached to it. And I separated that uh, as soon as I got it. It actually was, I'll show you. Ah. It actually was, this one that was attached to that um, a bigger leaf and then it produced this one eventually so I'm not gonna separate these guys I find that they are a little bit more skinnier than obviously it's original mother plant like you guys see here but what we're gonna do is um, yeah we're just gonna remove this from the soil and then see what the rhizomes look like as far as I remember they were a lot more clear and white not like the orange one that we saw here with the Zeylanica so let's go ahead and remove this guy from the soil and we'll see what we're dealing with
All right, guys, so check this out. So this was where the original cut I did uh, when I removed its babies, and then it grew right here, produced this one, and then there's a new one that's growing right here. So this is so cool. I'll show you guys this camera angle now. That's where I made the original cut when I removed its first babies, and then it started to grow that rhizome right there. And then it produced this pup that you guys see right here. This is the one we're gonna remove, but I'm already noticing that there's a new one that's starting to show right here. So I'm debating if I should do this now or wait till this grows out a bit more. Hmm, <laughs> this is tricky. You know what? We're gonna remove it. We're gonna remove it because, you know, man, snake plants are so cool because they really are somewhat indestructible. And I know I killed one, but that's because I left it outside in nearly freezing temperature. But this, this will be fine. So we're gonna take a sharp knife, cut this guy right here in the middle, and then plant it in a cacti soil that's dry. And again, we're not gonna water this guy right away because A, this already has a little bit of wet soil, but also because it's an open wound. And like I said, I did this, you know, when I cut it and I planted it right away in soil and it, it ended up being fine. So we're gonna do the same thing. So we're just gonna take our sharp scissors and then make that cut right now. All right guys, so we made our cut and you guys can see there, there's a lot of roots attached to this rhizome as well as uh, on its mother plant. So we're gonna plant these guys in two separate pots uh, using a cacti soil and a lot of perlite and then we're not gonna water this again. So, hmm. Okay, you know what? Because it's my whale fin and very hard to find, we're gonna wait about a couple hours until just a few air kind of uh, dries that guy out a bit because I don't wanna take a chance or risk, but uh, I do recall uh, planting this guy in soil right away. But to be safe, we're gonna wait for about an hour or two. I'll be back. All right guys, so we're back and we have our two whale fins right here. I actually had these guys sitting outside. It was nice and sunny, plus it was windy. So it allowed a lot of that air to flow through the rhizome, helping it dry out a bit. And I'm glad I decided to split this guy up because I'm noticing this baby one, not only is it showing you growth here with this rhizome, uh, but it also has this tiny baby right there. So this is so cool and I'm excited to obviously have a lot more whale fins because they're not as commonly found right now in, in uh, any of the plant stores or plant shops anyway. So I'm definitely going to trade with a friend of mine who I gave him my Monstera cutting, my original Monstera from Walmart. And I want that cutting back, but I think he's going to really like a whale fin because it's such a nice statement piece for like home decor and whatnot. So. So we're gonna plant these guys back in an eight inch container. This gives them a little bit more room to obviously expand, grow some more rhizome, and then produce some pups. Our soil medium we're gonna use is primarily cacti and succulent soil with a whole bunch of perlite and a whole bunch of pumice as well. So let's go ahead and start doing that right now. All right guys, so we'll start with the mother plant and I already have my eight inch container. I put about a third of the soil mix already in there and I wanna place this guy right in the center, but I wanna make sure He's standing up nice and straight and I also just want it to be a little bit higher so that way you know when I did put this guy in a decorative pot it's uh, nice and uh, uh, leveled the way I want it to be so uh, because I really do like the single leaf look it's such a statement piece especially in like a white pot if you guys recognize this is my uh, my logo is a replica of this uh, San Severia so this is dear and close to my heart as well but uh, yeah so let's go ahead and top this guy up with some soil Ta-da! There you guys have it. Here he is, looking so good. So like I mentioned, I'm not gonna water this guy right away. I'm just gonna let it sit there for about three or four days. And I'll water it when, uh, you know, he needs to be watered. You know, like I said, I water my snake plants usually during the summer once a month. And even then, I just like kind of splash water on it when I water this guy. So we're gonna go ahead and now do the baby one. And it's no longer a baby. So, you know, I was debating if I was gonna use a smaller container, but now that I see this new growth plus this one, I think he'll be fine in this eight inch container. So let's go ahead and do this one as well.
Ta-da! There you guys have it. So that is how easy and simple it is to propagate your snake plants, you know, through separation and division and uh, pot them back into soil. So I'm excited for these guys because I'm going to give this one to a friend of mine, trade him back for that Monstera cutting I gave him and uh, obviously keep this one. This is the original whale fin. It is one of my favorite house plants ever, uh, partly because they're so easy to care for and they just look so cool and stunning. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Comment below and let me know if you plan to propagate any of your snake plants and which method do you prefer to do? Do you prefer the division and separation or the leaf cutting and water propagation? Other than that, enjoy the rest of your weekend and we'll see you guys soon. Peace!